Hey everybody, Bridget Lynn Dolgoff, Conscious of Economics and Urban Farm Project. And uh, um, we're looking at my compost mounds. If you go back in videos, you'll see what they are and kind of how I built them as I went along. Anyway, soon I'm going to be, um, as soon as I have a warm snap, um, I am either going to turn them um, and make new ones off, you know, the turn, or feed them. And I think because it's cold, I'm just going to keep feeding them. I'll water and feed them really well, and then just keep them going um, through till March, till I really have something viable I can do with them. Keep the compost, you know, covered and and good and yeah, don't want it to go bad. So um, uh, today I just kind of wanted to talk to people of kind of about like what I'm going through, and I think a lot of people are. And um, I have to remind myself, you know, like I have these belief systems, you know, that have been embedded in me, you know, that are these reward punishment systems. Um, and so, you know, I think that those sometimes make people feel like they're, you know, um, more deserving. And I think there's, you know, two aspects. There's the more deserving or just deserving and um, two different types of mindsets. But anyway, I think we end up engaging in a lot of anger and, you know, self-abuse. And, um, and I was thinking about this today, you know, like I've been through a lot in my life and um, done some videos on it, and, but um, for the most part, Ooh, I've been feeling it like bubble up for a couple days. I can feel like the cellular release of it. And kind of getting to where I'm at now, which is kind of this emotional apex. I realize, you know, um, that, you know, in my whole life, I was never really able to trust anybody. And if I made the mistake to do it, you know, I just suffered like all kinds of, you know, different kinds of abuse. So I learned to be tough as nails and I'm tough as nails. I'm still 53 and I'm tough as nails. Um, and, but I realized like, you know, I think my biggest, I'm not very good at receiving, um, because, you know, I'm just used to having done everything myself. And the other thing, too, is, like, um, you kind of have to ask, you know, for help in order to um, receive, you know, what you need. So I was thinking about this uh, this morning. I was doing um, tobacco per, you know, per smoke. And um, just thinking about a lot of stuff and, um, you know, how far you know, down, am I willing to go? Because I, you know, <laughs> I feel like, and I know that this is just the period of time, you know, but I feel like, you know, I'm constantly having to try to, you know, hold back the river, you know, trying to shovel it back up as fast as I possibly can, which is, you know, futile. And um, just, you know, trying to maintain and, and stay on my feet, you know. And I think lots of different kinds of everything, you know, that's going on. And it isn't that I can't do it. It's just um, things are kind of running down. So I had to kind of evaluate, you know, kind of some issues here. Like, you know, why I'm kind of unable to reach out to people and 
you know, be able to explain to them, you know, or ask for help. Um, and it, I think, shows kind of like a vulnerability that just really was never allowed to show. Never had like a vocabulary for it. And this is kind of the the, the kicker. my whole life being human trafficked and what all these other things, you know, that happened to me. I never could, you know, ask for help. Um, I had to buck up. I couldn't have that kind of vulnerability and there was no one around me that I could trust. To even, you know, ask for help. And so it was like I heard this little um, inner child voice today say, Help me. And I thought, you know, that is just something that I just really haven't, you know, been able to do anyway you know I'm going to start um, asking for help um, explaining you know to people what my situation is and I'm definitely going to let my inner child, you know, ask for help. Because I'm the only one that can give her that help. That she needs in order to heal. Because, you know, everything that, you know, was post-traumatic stress disorder is held in our bodies. And so those memories are in there until we actually deal with them. You know, we can also get the physical work so that somebody like myself can get in there and work those issues out for you as well. So you don't have to carry them along in your structure. Because remember, what's above is below. So our physical form takes on a lot of... Um, default, I guess. It has the default setting. <laughs> um, anyway, I just kind of wanted to let people know that. And if there are other people out there who, you know, have, have been through some serious trauma and abuse and just want to reach out that, you know, Maybe that's the hardest thing for a lot of us is just to be able to just, I mean, get down spiritually, you know, and ask the Creator for help and and then be able to mentally, you know, ask that help for that help. And then emotionally, you know, connecting with that inner child and those aspects of our younger self that are stunted in there. And getting that, and then asking for help on a on a physical. So anyway, with that said, have a great week. Maybe I'll post another video. And um, just you know, keep moving forward, onward and upward. Keep going, do the work. Hold on to yourself. Hug yourself. Um, and, you know, ask for help. Find, you know, find some aspect, some level, um, set, dimension to ask for, you know, that help. Okay. Talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.